Alright, you are back with comedian Dave Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. I know I'm not meant to be on technology at the moment. I'm off it. But tonight when I was having a little scroll through my Instagram and Facebook, it was plastered all over my feeds that Dave Chappelle had just released a special during COVID. So I was like, fuck that. My willpower's not that strong. I have to watch this fucking thing. It's Dave Chappelle. It's called 846. If you haven't seen it yet, press stop right now. Go to YouTube. It's on YouTube. Type in Chappelle or Dave Chappelle 846 and fucking watch it. It's 27 minutes of pure fire. Dave Chappelle just became more than what he already was. And he already was the greatest comedian to ever live. Dave Chappelle just became the fucking truth. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it to you. I've watched it twice now. And as soon as I finish this, I'll be watching it again. And both times I watched it, there was a little bit of salty build up in my eye. Man, that was powerful shit. It feels like something that might even go down in history. It was just truth and heart and spirit. And humanity. It was everything. I feel like he transcended comedy with this. He even had a few good jokes in there too. But Dave Chappelle is someone I would walk into the fucking fire with. And I think everyone would walk into the fire with Chappelle. He's a dangerous, dangerous fucking man because he is loved by everyone. There's no one who doesn't love Dave Chappelle. Last job I was working on, the two racist guys operating the Ali Mac, the lift, I hop in and they were talking about Dave Chappelle show sketches from like 20 years ago. One had a neck tattoo. The other one was complaining about the Chinese the day before to me. Just do yourself a favor and just go watch it and then come back because you know what day it is. Oh yes, it's fucked up Friday. Okay, so this story is sent in by my man out in LA. He only wants his first name used. So this is from a man out there, Lorenzo. I don't know how many fucking Lorenzos there are in LA. Is that like David out there? Because if you were Lorenzo in Australia and I was just using your first name, everyone would know who you are. I think there would be like six Lorenzos in all of Australia. And four of them are stuck here because they couldn't get back due to COVID. So here it is. Thanks for the story, Lorenzo. It was a Friday afternoon and my 34th birthday. I had a suite at the Standard Hotel in downtown Los Angeles for the night. When I was in LA at the start of last year, I stayed in downtown LA and it's the fucking weirdest joint ever. It's like a fucking ghost town half the time and everyone is smoking weed and it doesn't even smell like weed. It doesn't have that sweet, nice smell. It has this like eight days of psychosis smell. The only place that looked real happening was the 7-Eleven around the corner from my place. There was about 40 cunts hanging out the front of that at all times. Okay, do I need to start the story again because I went on that long fucking thing? I'll start it again. It was a Friday afternoon and my 34th birthday. I had a suite at the Standard Hotel in downtown LA for the night. I left the small business I own, pausing only to grab the weekly cash stack and shove it into my work bag on the way out. I then drove straight to the hotel where I met my girlfriend. She stopped at the liquor store on the way so we had a full bar in the room. Our friends started showing up and the Molly and Charlie got broken out. The nightclub on the roof opened and we spent all night having a blast. Shuffling from the club back to the room, doing lines and drinking like maniacs. Fast forward to 6am and I'm drunk and I'm wired. And take a Xanax to get some sleep before checkout. Ooh. Once you take a Xanax at the end of the night, what you're really saying is, I am not taking responsibility for anything I have just done. I want the next eight hours to be anxiety free. So he took the Xanax. I wake up to my girlfriend shouting, stop, what are you doing? Over and over. As I slowly wake up in my still very drunk head, I realize that she is yelling at me because I'm not in the bathroom. I'm standing in the corner of the bedroom, pissing away at full steam. Yeah, where else are you going to piss? You're in the suite, downtown LA. That's one of my rules. If I'm staying in a hotel that costs more than $100 a night, I piss anywhere. I don't care. I'll leave a tip and I'll piss anywhere. Actually, I won't leave a tip, but I'll still piss anywhere. 
This also happens to be the corner where I put down my work bag and my clothes from last night. Fuck. But I just crawl back into bed and go back to sleep. Yeah, the zanny. That's what you got the zanny for, no worries. Hakuna Matata. When I wake up again, it's time to check out, and there is still my piss-drenched bag and clothes in the corner. I don't know what to do with it, and I'm embarrassed for the maid to find it. So I stuff my pissy clothes inside my pissy bag and leave it randomly down the hallway. We leave the hotel hungover as hell and start to drive home, when suddenly I realise that all the cash I took home with me when I left work the day before is all still stuffed inside the zipper pocket of the piss bag I just left in the hallway, and it's like $14,000. Jesus Christ. That will get the blood flowing, won't it? Fucking oath it will. Even leaving your phone charge behind gives you a fucking panic attack. Would I turn back, though, to get the 14000 Depends how hungover I was, I suppose. Just that situation there is a bad situation because you've got so many elements in place that you do not want to deal with at all. You're hungover and coming down off the coke and the molly. You haven't slept and you've got a Xanax that's lost the war against your come down and your anxiety. On top of that, you've got 14 grand sitting in a duffel bag, guarded only by the stench of dried urine. I wouldn't mind half a Xanny now just thinking about it. So of course I then have to call the hotel and ask them if maybe they have found my work bag that I left in the hall. Luckily they had and it was at the front desk so I had to walk up to the front desk looking like a complete mess and tell the lady I was there for the bag I left. She handed it to me inside of a plastic laundry bag and I had the walk of shame through the packed lobby back to my car. We pulled over a block away and I dumped the pissy clothes and inside the zipper pocket underneath all the cash was still there. What lunatic would bother to dig past the pissy clothes to find it? Me. I would have just stolen the bag without its contents. Even if it was empty, I would have stolen the bag. The 14G would have just been the cherry on top of the sweet bag I just stole. And Lorenzo ends it with, I guess I got away with slipping this time. Yeah, losing that amount of money is a hard one to fucking recover from. Although if you did lose it, you probably would have sobered up the next day for good. Anyway, thank you, Lorenzo, for your story. I hope you're doing all right out there in L.A. It's been looking pretty wild out there. hope your business is safe. Everyone, go check out that Dave Chappelle thing. It's fucking brilliant. All right, that's me done. Have a good weekend. See you the fuck later.